It's no secret that obesity in America has been an ongoing issue, and that doesn't seem to change anytime soon. In fact, according to Harvard University, about two in every three adults, or 69% of the population in the US, are overweight, while one in three adults are obese, or 39%. It has to make you wonder how the most powerful and advanced nation in the world could be so obese, especially when compared to other countries in Europe and Asia. From Harvard School of Public Health finds Americans are getting heavier, and that by the end of this new decade, about half, 49% of us, will be obese. It's not like we don't have the means as a nation for a healthier lifestyle and better quality food. Or maybe Americans are meant to be obese as they want us to stay that way. Sounds controversial, right? Well, in this video, we will expose reasons why Americans are so obese compared to the other countries. So my fellow Americans, make sure to stick around to the end of the video to learn why. Do us a favor and give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this with someone you care about. All right, let's get to it. Number one, the food, the food, the food. It's all in the food we Americans eat. We have already been exposing the hidden dangers of American diet to our viewers, with previous videos like these on our channel. The thing is, it is not common knowledge that some of our food, such as chicken, bread, and salmon, for example, are banned in other countries because they find their food to be unhealthy and they do not want their citizens to consume. This explains why the obesity rates in countries in Europe and Asia are far less when compared to the US. For instance, our bread is banned from China due to potentially harmful ingredients, with some being the same thing used in yoga mats. China is no stranger to controversial foods themselves, and if they ban our bread, that's saying a lot about our bread. The American diet is becoming increasingly dependent on processed foods, according to this article by NYU. Our foods are heavily processed, genetically modified, contains high calories, fat, and even worse, trans fat, excessive sodium, sugar, preservatives, and even synthetic hormones for our beef. New numbers on just how much processed food Americans eat. A new study finds ultra-processed foods make up more than half of all the calories in the U.S. diet. Ultra-processed foods really have very little real food in them at all. So let's say they started out as corn. You know, that corn has been hydrogenated or reconstituted down to nothing. So then additives are put back in to make fake food taste real. A diet heavy in processed foods can lead to heart disease and obesity. It really makes you think how much of the food we consume are actually freshly picked produce from a farm compared to coming out of a lab facility somewhere. American foods are notorious for being high in fat, sugar, and salt content, as we already previously mentioned. And this is just the regular food that we consume, and not the junk food, as such as chips, cookies, donuts, fried foods, sodas, which are the main culprit to obesity. I'm willing to say that Americans drink more soda than they drink water. And what is worse, they want you to. Why? Because it's all about the profits. Everyone else profits except for you, the consumer. Which brings us to number two. They're trying to increase their share of, of your stomach and increase the amount of profit they're making off the food you eat. There's science behind that crunch. The food industry is even researching the connection between the taste receptors on your tongue and the corresponding chemical reaction in your brain. The result, carefully engineered combinations of salt, sugar, fat, and chemicals deliberately designed so you can't eat just one. Number two, it's all about the profits. Ever heard the old saying, the better it tastes, the unhealthier it probably is? That means more salt, more sugar, more fat, and all those questionable ingredients that makes a taste bud so happy, but probably not doing favorites for your health, your blood pressure, your waistline, and weight. Ultimately, the food companies that manufacture these foods will profit from your purchases, as well as the supermarket and vendors' profits, and the city will profit from the sales taxes of these purchases. It's profitable to sell food that is fatty and sugary and salty and addictive. It's much less profitable uh, to sell um, food that is wholesome, that is high in fiber, uh, and is uh, minimally processed. So what's driving the obesity epidemic? It's corporate profit. Currently, a handful of huge corporations own nearly every brand of food. Together, they pull in $500 billion in annual sales. Now, if someone were to consume these unhealthy foods on a regular basis, it might have a negative effect on one's health, including hypertension, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. The more unhealthy a population is, the more the medical industry will profit from the increased patients seeking medical attention caused by their unhealthy diets. 
Pharmaceutical companies will then profit from the medicine that's prescribed to treat conditions such as hypertension and diabetes caused by the food we eat. As you can see where I'm going with this, it is a hamster wheel where the consumers does all the eating of this unhealthy food and heavily processed foods for that matter and everyone else profits. It pays them for you to be obese. Number three, additives and ingredients in your food designed to make you hungrier. We're stepping up on this list and exposing more things that might not be common knowledge. So make sure to stick around and pay attention. According to this article by Time, where Dr. Belinda Lernitz is an endocrinologist and a researcher at the Harvard Medical School, explains that foods that contain processed and refined carbs, such as potato chips, white or wheat breads, grain-based snacks, and crackers can cause your blood sugar levels to spike upon consumption. This essentially is the body's reaction to processed carbs by releasing a significant amount of insulin in order to balance the blood sugar levels. This may explain why, once you open the pack of chips, you can't seem to stop until the entire bag is finished, because after a few bites, your brain is telling you it wants more and more. And of course, the more you eat, it would eventually lead to obesity. Also, the more you eat and the more you buy, which means the more profits. As you can imagine, there are many ingredients in the foods we eat that can drive us to be hungrier, but it's simply too much for us to listen in this video. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video where we cover the other ingredients and in foods that are designed to make you hungry. According to new research at Harvard, the ingredient propionate increases several hormones in the body that are linked to obesity. The study combined data from several randomized placebo-controlled studies. They found propionate triggers a cascade of events that increases the level of insulin in the blood. High levels of insulin trigger your body to store fat. Number four, portions. You won't notice just really how unnecessarily big our portions are until you step out of the country and see it for yourself. When I was traveling in France, when I received my order at the restaurant, the first thought that came to my American mind was, why is the portion so small? Will this be able to keep me full? Well, once I finished eating, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that I was quite full, but in a good way. It was no more or no less food than what I needed, and my stomach was happily fulfilled. There was none of that feeling of being overstuffed, heartburn, or wanting to pass out somewhere with a food coma. It became apparent that the portions we have in the US are way too big for what we really need and simply isn't necessary to eat so much to be fulfilled. The American diet contains heavy foods serving big portions, which is a recipe for obesity. Now, according to this chart by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, it shows how the increased portions for the past 20 years have really contributed to American obesity. Take a look specifically at the popcorn and soda portions where they have increased more than double. Do you recall the supersized portions that were served at local fast food restaurants a while back? Well, we're going to cover that next. Number five, fast food is a way of life. Let's face it, the reality is once you drive out of the major cities and head into the suburbs and the more rural areas of the US, there's practically a fast food restaurant on every other block. What makes this even worse is there does not seem to be any other healthier options besides the endless supply of fast food restaurants easily accessible and tempting you on every corner. Let me ask you, my viewers, if you remember the days of being asked if you wanted to supersize your McDonald's meal a while back. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? Hungry for? I'm hungry for a McDonald's triple cheeseburger. Extra value meal. Supersize it. Just 39 cents more. Well, in 2004, a documentary film, Supersize, that was directed and starring Morgan Spurlock, explored the fast food industry and how it encouraged poor nutrition and the profits made from it. By the end of his month-long investigation, where he consumed only McDonald's food three times a day for 30 consecutive days, he had gained close to 25 pounds and other various health issues and symptoms. After six weeks from the debut of the film, McDonald's ceased to supersize portions. If you'd like to watch a documentary, we included the link in the description box. Ultimately, the fast food industry plays a major role in contributing to the American obesity epidemic. The National Restaurant Association, the average American now gets more than five meals a week at restaurants, and their waistlines are expanding along with their tendency to eat out. Obesity is now among the nation's top public health concerns, and many fast food restaurants are responding with so-called healthy choices. It won't be easy to get Americans to change their habits. In many disadvantaged neighborhoods, it's easier to find a fast food restaurant than a grocery store. Number six, lack of exercise. Again, with the exception of the major cities within the U.S., Americans drive everywhere. 
Our infrastructure has been designed for us to be heavily reliant on driving, either to get to work, the mall, or even to pick up a gallon of milk. Constantly driving means less walking and less overall exercise. Now, according to this article by Matt Stanford, a study conducted by a team of researchers at the Stanford University School of Medicine using national health surveys results that found that Americans have been exercising less, which has caused further rising obesity rates in America. Combined with other lifestyle factors, such as long work hours sitting down in the cubicle desk, video games, Netflix, and other conveniences such as food delivery apps, technology, escalators, and elevators have caused Americans to have even less reason to exercise. According to this article published by Mayo Clinic, average healthy adults should have at least 30 minutes of physical activity per day. Hopefully, we have provided you with useful insights on why America has an ongoing issue with obesity and expose the things you might not have known. Share this video with others that might find value in this information and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and smash the like button for us. Let us know in the comments on what your thoughts on what is causing obesity in America and until then, stay informed and Genius Tomato out.